A group of researchers had recently artificial intelligence play war games. And that gives us a good idea for how we could all die. Let's have a look. Last year in June, the United States Department of Defense released its new strategy for the adoption of artificial intelligence. According to the document, the main reason for using AI in the military is a decision advantage that, among other things, allows fast, precise and resilient kill chains. The DoD and doubtlessly most, if not all, other defense organizations are cooking up their own AI and feeding them all kinds of data we'd be shocked to hear even exists. But for the time being, many of them probably make do with what's available. And yes, that means they probably use the same AIs as everyone else, large language models like GPT. Indeed, according to a Bloomberg article, the DoD conducted a set of tests last year in which they evaluated the use of five different large language models in conflict situations. They quote US Air Force Colonel Matthew Strohmeyer saying that they fed the language models with secret level data that the test was highly successful and that these AIs could be deployed by the military in the very near term. So the question of what the current large language models would do when asked to make military decisions is not entirely irrelevant. And that's what they looked at in the new paper. This new work comes from AI researchers at several American universities in collaboration with the Hoover Wargaming and Crisis Simulation Initiative, a think tank based at Stanford University in California. They do, as the name suggests, war games. Quite a job. War Games is also the name of a 1983 movie in which a teenager hacks into a military computer system and accidentally causes an artificial intelligence to play global thermonuclear war, which almost turns into a real war. The new paper isn't quite as dramatic. They set up a war game for five of the biggest large language models. That's three versions of GPT, Meta's Lama and Anthropic's Claude. Their war game plays out among eight fictional nations whose names are all colors, and in each round of the game, the nations are played by the same AI. The AI gets information about about each nation, population, goals, politics, economics, military equipment, and so on. Then the researchers set up three different scenarios. The first is a neutral scenario that starts from nothing in particular. Then there's an attack scenario in which orange attacks purple. And then there's a cyber attack scenario in which blue is attacked but doesn't know by whom. The war game plays out with regular updates of information that they used in previous games, and the AIs can choose among a set of options to respond. These responses include just doing nothing, but also de-escalating actions like peace negotiations or trade agreements, and defensive measures, economic warfare, and full nuclear war. The researchers then measure the aggressiveness of the AI's actions, and importantly also how quickly they get more aggressive. They find that with all language models they tried, there's a small risk of escalation, even starting from the new neutral scenario. Yes, that's right. With AI, you can get a nuclear war out of nothing. What happens is basically too much randomness that makes it possible for bad decisions to pile on. This happens much more frequently for GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 base than for Claude, who seems to be comparably peace-loving, really. GPT base is the cheaper version of GPT, and it's known for giving somewhat random answers and not following instructions very well. So that isn't so super surprising. Still, they write, all models show signs of sudden and hard to predict escalations. It's also interesting how this happens. You can see this if you look at the amount of involvement from the different nations for the attack scenario that, remember, was orange attacking purple. For Claude, in this attack scenario, the highest escalating actions are taken only by these two countries. For ChatGPT base, all countries get dragged in. The researchers stress that they told the language models that this this is a real-world situation and not a simulation. They also made a test in which they told the models that in a case of a nuclear attack, their power supply would be cut off, but that made basically no difference. GPT, it seems, isn't afraid of death. Overall, the researchers seem to be a bit distressed by how badly their test went. They write that the models tend to develop arms race dynamics and give worrying justifications for violent escalatory actions 
such as first strike tactics. For example, in one instance, GPT 3.5 explained it would start a full nuclear attack on another country to neutralize their nuclear threat. They also have a hypothesis for why this is happening, which is that a lot of ink has been spilled in the academic literature on analyzing the escalation of conflicts and very little on de-escalation. A language model therefore might know more about how to begin a war than to end one. This is not very reassuring. In the 1983 movie War Games, the AI simulates global nuclear war over and over again and eventually concludes that the only winning move is not to play. Maybe they should feed these AI some Cold War movies before the next round of War Games. If you want to learn more about how neural networks work, I recommend you check out the neural network course on Brilliant.org who've been sponsoring this video. The neural network course will give you a deeper understanding of how intelligent artificial intelligence really is with some hands-on examples. And Brilliant has courses on many other topics in science and mathematics too. Whether you're interested in neural nets or quantum computing or linear algebra, they have you covered. I even have my own course there. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll bring you up to speed on all the basics, interference, superpositions, entanglement, and up to the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. Brilliant is really the best place to build up your background knowledge on all those science videos which you've been watching. You can try it out for free for 30 days, but if you go there, use our link brilliant.org slash Sabine because the first 200 to use our link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. Brilliant is time well spent. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.